In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Raspberry Pi 500 Plus. Definitely a surprise release from the Pi Foundation, but it's very welcome. And with the Plus model here, we've got a lot of upgrades over the original Raspberry Pi 500. Internal SSD support comes with a 256GB M.2 SSD pre-installed and a mechanical keyboard. In fact, this is an RGB backlit mechanical keyboard per key RGB. Keep that in mind. All of the RGB on this is controlled by Raspberry Pi 2040, or the RP2040. It's integrated into the system. Out of the box, this is using low-profile Gatron KF33 switches and obviously low-profile keycaps, but you can swap all of this out to your liking. Personally, I love what they've done here. We've got nice I.O. on the back of this unit, and we don't have to use that SD card slot because, like I mentioned, this has an internal SSD. You can do up to a 2280 M.2 SSD in here, but out of the box, it came with a 256 gigabyte Raspberry Pi branded 2230 M.2 SSD, and I love the way these blue switches sound. Again, we've got the Gatron KS33 low profile blue switches. When it comes to I.O., around back here from the left to the right, one full-size USB 2.0 port, two full-size USB 3.0 ports. We've still got a micro SD card slot, USB Type-C for powering the system up, dual micro HDMI, and we've got gigabit Ethernet here. Inside of the box, it does come with a key cap puller and what I call a spudger, just so we can get in here really easily. Go ahead and pull one of these off, give you a closer look. I've never messed around with the Gatron Blue KS33 low profile switches, but uh, they do sound good, very tactile feel. And of course, since we've got the removable keycaps, you can always swap this out and really turn it into your own little keyboard. It's up to you. Of course, I wanted to take a look at the internals of the new Pi 500 Plus, so we're gonna get in here and it's quite easy to do so. There's five screws on the bottom, so you'll need to remove those. We've also got these nice rubber feet, so it's not gonna slide around on the desk, uh, you know, when you're using it. And to get in here, we're just gonna use the little plastic spudger that came with it. Now that we've got the clips out of the way, we'll gently remove the keyboard, but we've got a ribbon cable, so just be careful. Go ahead and take that off. And yeah, I mean, it's a really nice little setup here. And like I mentioned, fully controllable per key RGB lights on this unit. Getting down here a little deeper, uh, we've got this big heat sink. It does make contact with the CPU. I've already removed the two screws here, but right over here, we've got our M.2 SSD, and we've got enough room for up to a 2280. It does come with that 2230 Raspberry Pi branded 256 gigabyte drive. I'll just go ahead and pull this up. So yeah, I think they've done an amazing job with the overall design. We do have AC Wi-Fi built in, Bluetooth 5.0, and that quad-core 2.4 gigahertz CPU that's found inside of the Raspberry Pi 5. We also have the onboard RP2040, and that's what drives the LEDs here on this backlit keyboard. Okay, so I want to show you what this thing can do, and we're going to be running Raspberry Pi OS. It comes pre-installed on that 256GB M.2 SSD. I'm using the Raspberry Pi monitor. We'll go ahead and boot it up. A little bit of RGB action on the keyboard right there, but we'll get into the operating system. And here it is. So I've just got a mouse connected so we can uh, navigate the full operating system. Raspberry Pi OS, fully up to date. I do love the feel and sound of this keyboard. So, you know, browsing the web, just searching your favorite sites or typing up a document is pretty nice. I mean, it's kind of satisfying. Right now, I don't have any crazy RGB effects going on this keyboard, but we're gonna set some up, and it's pretty simple to do so. With the latest update of Raspberry Pi OS, once this is officially launched, you'll have the Raspberry Pi keyboard config. So you can get right in here, and there's several things we can do. We can remap the keys on this keyboard if we want to. You can set up a macro, or you can control the RGB. And there's a bunch of different presets here already set up, ready to go. And just to give you an idea, we've got a bunch to choose from. Mine's completely off, but we could go with Hue Wave, Typing Heat Map, Digital Rain, Splash, Multi Splash. And I'm sure you could probably create your own through Python, but I've got a couple that I've already been testing here, like Pinwheel. So this is set to speed 200. We can up the speed, so I'll just go to 250 with it. But I 
don't think I want this going full time like this. If I was to use the pinwheel, I'd have to slow it down to something like 50. And at 50, it's not so crazy. But these are some really good looking LEDs on this setup. I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. So I've just kind of been cycling through some of the uh, RGB presets here. One that I actually really like is Pixel Rain. And with this one, you can also set the speed on it. I've gone up to 200 because at 50, it was a bit slow, but this is what it looks like. And I don't want to go through all of them because I don't want to spoil it for anybody who's going to pick one of these up. You can kind of go through them, see if you like them or not. But one of the coolest things that they have here is the ability to play games on the keyboard. And I'm not talking about on your screen. I'm talking about with the built-in RGB. So right now there's kind of a flappy bird clone. And personally, I'm really excited for more people to get their hands on this. I'd love to see a bunch of new games from the community on this setup. But with this Flappy Bird clone, uh, I'll go ahead and hold these. So I guess this is just how you start the game. Once it initializes, we can press space to start jumping. So we've got our little LED there, and that's going to be our bird. We've got the blocks coming through, so we got to kind of dodge them, just like Flappy Bird. I thought this was pretty cool. Once you hit one, it's going to flash red. You'll also fall to the bottom, and that'll end that round. I mean, it's super simple. We've seen this game a hundred times, but seeing it run, you know, on this RP2040 on LEDs with this Raspberry Pi setup is pretty amazing. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, we're basically working with the same exact thing in the Raspberry Pi 5, except we've got it inside of a keyboard form factor. So we've got that 2.4 gigahertz quad core ARM Cortex A76 CPU. Yes, you can overclock it in here. We've got that uh, big heat sink or heat spreader. It will work out pretty well at higher clocks. A pre-installed 256 gigabyte Raspberry Pi M.2 SSD with Raspberry Pi OS installed on it. Dual band AC Wi-Fi, so we've got that 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Bluetooth 5.0, and yes, there is a horizontal 40 pin GPIO header around back. I've been having a great time with this thing for the last couple days, and if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to the official Raspberry Pi website in the description below. I will have at least one more video coming up. There's a few things that I want to do with this. I'd like to get some overclocking out of the way, but I figured straight off the bat, I'd make a quick first look video. If there's anything you want to see running on this, if you want to see it overclocked, let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.